How's it going everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming and welcome back to Learning Game Maker Studio 2. In this quick episode we're going to be looking at how to draw sprites to the screen using different methods. There are several ways to draw an image to the screen in Game Maker Studio 2, but before you can draw an image to the screen you have to either import an image or create a new one. So let's start off with those two steps. We'll create a new project in Game Maker Language. So in order to do that, we're going to right click on sprites and we're going to create a new sprite. From here, you can name the sprite, change the size, import a sprite that you've already made or create one using the editor itself. In order to create your own sprite using the editor, you can double click inside this box right here. That's going to open up the image editor. You can hold the control button or scroll with your middle mouse to change the size. You can also hold down the middle mouse button and drag around the box to get a better view of what you're working on. Use these tools and techniques to get a comfortable look at what you're working on. We've got a box and we're, we've chosen to make it 64 by 64 pixels. Let's create something. We can have a sprite that has multiple images or a single image itself. Let's create an animated sprite very quickly. So I'm going to click on this box here, press Control, hit C, then I'm going to press Control V a few times. So I've got eight frames of a 64 by 64 pixel uh, sprite. A really cool thing about this image editor is you can play and pause animations and create animations quickly. So let's go ahead and do something like that. I'm going to draw some red dots scrolling off the screen like that. Each frame is populated its own image as I click and hold. So it's cycling through these. Let's add to it. Let's add some more. And maybe one more. Cool. So we've got like this vortex looking thing going on. We can also use the erase. Now it looks pretty much like a particle effect going on, but it's actually an image. That's how you create a new image. Let's look at how to import an image. We'll do the same process at the beginning. We'll right click on sprites and create a new sprite, or we can add existing or add existing from my library. If you add existing, it will look for a yo-yo file. When you save your project, it saves the sprites as .yy. You can use these .yy files to load into other projects. So creating something in one project will essentially let you have it in all your other projects as well. Now we've imported this very terrible pixel art gun that I've made. Once you have an image to draw, you may draw it with the draw or draw GUI event pages or simply drag it onto the room using the background or asset layers double click on rooms. We can do the same control and middle mouse click to move this around. You notice on the left hand side we have layers inside of this room. We have the background layer and we can also add new layers as well. If you wish a sprite to be part of the background layer you can assign a sprite as the background layer but it will make it so that this is the background itself. Typically you don't want to do this unless this is like a large backdrop parallax map. You, you probably don't want to set a sprite as your background unless it's the specific sprite that's your background. Another thing to note is when you have an animated sprite and you draw that as your background, it kind of looks funny when you animate that. That's not the desired effect we think we would get. To draw it as an asset layer, you can do this to manipulate it more without creating an object if you don't necessarily want to create an object. Let's create a new asset layer. Left clicking on create new asset layer will add a new asset layer to the layers in the room that you've selected. So once we've selected this asset layer, we can also drag and drop any sprite onto the room. Now let's run the project and have a look at that. We can further manipulate the asset by left clicking it, dragging and inverting and uh, changing how, you know, drag and drop it somewhere else on the map, changing the size, rotate it, 
and all that information will be stored and loaded when you play the game. This is most likely not the way you want to do this. If you choose to set it as the background, you'll be a bit more limited with what you can do to manipulate it, but if you choose to draw it as an asset, you'll be free to resize it with the mouse. Generally, you'll not want to use either of these methods to draw a sprite to the screen, and instead you'll want to create a new object and assign that sprite to the object in order to manipulate it further and much easier with some simple lines of code. So right click on objects and create a new object. To assign a sprite, you click on the three dots where it says sprite. Select what sprite you want it to be. Now once this is an object, we can further manipulate this with adding events. So let's talk quickly about events. You may want to add a couple of events. Let's talk about how they work. The create event is going to run this code one time when the object is created. If we wanted to change the size as the, the object is created, we can easily do that by changing the X scale or the Y scale. So let's try to do this, image underscore X scale. Let's change the size of the object as it's created. So we'll type in image underscore X scale equals two, and we'll do an end line. So this is going to make it a little bit bigger on the X value. To keep the image the same size as it was without stretching it, we're going to say the image Y scale is equal to the image X scale. We could also just say equals two, but if we change, if we want to change the object and keep the sizes proportionate, we might want to just change the X scale to save us some lines of code in the future. But what we're going to do is copy paste this code and take it to the step event. So we're going to add a new event, the step event. Now the step event is going to run every frame of the game. So at every point in the game, we're going to set the Y scale equal to the image X scale of the object. That way it never gets stretched out unproportionately. Here we can change the X or the Y if we so desire. The Y scale will match it. Once we've created the object, we need to add that object to the room. Objects are usually drawn on the instance layer. So we're going to select the instance layer and we're going to left click our objects and drag it and drop onto the room. Now we have an object that we can manipulate, but will also be manipulated through code. So we won't have to manipulate it. In fact, it doesn't even matter where we put it. We can change where it goes and where it spawns and what happens to it with the code. So we can really plop it anywhere. It'll be where we put it unless we change that with code. Let's just take a look at how it looks now as an object. You may have noticed some differences between drawing this as an object or drawing it as a sprite to the screen on the asset layer or the background. When drawing it as an asset or as a background, it doesn't do a refresh scene. So all of the pixels get kind of smushed together and it looks very blurry. This is why you want to use an object to draw your sprites because you have an automatic draw self on a draw event that's not there unless you use the draw event and then you have to say draw self. But it also refreshes so that you don't have uh, like the pixels bleeding into themselves. Let's manipulate the location of this with the mouse. Let's say if we left click, we're going to move it to the left. And if we right click, we're going to move it to the right. We'll make conditional statements that checks if we're pressing the mouse. So if mouse button, mouse check. So if mouse check button, and we'll say MB underscore left, which is the code for when we left click things. Then we're going to say X, which is the object's X, since we're putting this in the step event of the object, which is the X location. We're going to say X minus minus with an inline. So if we're pressing the left click, we're going to subtract from X, which will put us back to the left. We'll copy paste this code. And then we'll change this to MB right. And we'll say X plus plus. Now, if we press the left click, you can see the image is moving to the left. If I let go, it stops. And if I right click, it's going to start moving to the right. So you can already see how assigning a sprite to an object would be more beneficial than just drawing it to the background or drawing it to an asset layer. And that'll conclude this short tutorial on drawing sprites in Game Maker Studio 2. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up, like, favorite, share, subscribe to the channel if you want more tutorials like this, and consider backing me on Patreon if you would like to make special requests. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.